What's the real story behind Tom and Jerry? What made the cartoon so special? Hey, you want to get back in the house, don't you? No. Welcome to Do You Remember? I am Nostalgic Nick, and today we're going to be discussing everyone's favorite cat and mouse. William Hanna and Joseph Barbera wrote, produced, and directed 114 Tom and Jerry shorts from 1940 to 57. And the series was loved by both the young and the young at heart. One custard pie? Let me have it! <laughs> but even the most diehard fans will tell you that some of the shorts have not exactly aged well. And the producers re-edited and removed tons of culturally insensitive material in a desperate attempt to cover their tracks. But they can't hide everything from us, and we're gonna tell you about the Tom and Jerry cartoons that were too hot for TV. You won't want to miss this real-life cat and mouse tale. But before we begin, hit that thumbs up icon to show your support. And subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new video. But now, come on and pipe down, because my cartoons are starting. We'd like to thank the Academy. Tom and Jerry cartoons predated television and were screened theatrically before feature films. That made them officially eligible for Academy Awards, and they absolutely dominated the short subject cartoon category. Of all the cartoon franchises of the pre-TV era, no one received more hardware. Between 1940 and 54, Tom and Jerry received 13 Oscar nods and 8 wins. Yankee Doodle Mouse took home the duo's first award, and they had a four-year streak from 1943 until 46. In 1949, The Little Orphan even beat another nominated Tom and Jerry short, Hatch Up Your Troubles. But it didn't stop there. Jerry next partnered up with Gene Kelly to perform The Worry Song in Anchors Away, and reportedly got the gig after the other mouse passed. The 1945 musical comedy also paved the way for numerous other films that mixed live action and animation. I won't believe it! I can't believe it! I said believe it! Believe it, kid. Did Tom and Jerry encourage violence? Cats and mice have always been natural enemies, and things always escalate very quickly in Tom and Jerry's world. Tom's tail was often a casualty, and in Trap Happy, it gets cut off just outside the frame. But in Touche Pussycat, his tail is cut all the way off in plain sight. In Professor Tom, we witness corporal punishment. And in Kitty Foiled, we even see gunplay. We'll be discussing some of the series' darker moments shortly, but it's hard to top the ending of The Two Mouseketeers when Tom uses up one of his nine lives. In a 2016 speech at Cairo University, Salah Abdel Sadek, head of the State Information Service of Egypt, claimed that Tom and Jerry cartoons depicted the violence in a funny manner and sent the message that, yes, I can hit him, and I can blow him up with explosives, thereby normalizing violence to viewers. <laughs> But on the other hand, Christopher Stevens from the Daily Mail points out that none of the damage is permanent. And Tom and Jerry violence seems innocuous compared to today's computer games on every child's phone. Stevens said, quote, The cat might be hammered into the ground like a tent peg, or rolled up in a roller blind, but he's still chasing that mouse in the next scene. Is Tom and Jerry really racist? When The Lonesome Mouse was reissued in 1949, the NAACP began protesting Mammy Two-Shoes, an African-American maid who's just a walking, talking stereotype. Mammy first appeared in Puss Gets the Boot and went on to appear in 18 more episodes. Mammy was originally voiced by well-known character actress Lillian Randolph. When Hanna-Barbera got the rights to Tom and Jerry back from MGM in 1975, they struggled to find a network home for their beloved show. Joe Barbera told the Associated Press that after they showed a few shorts to studio executives, quote, they laughed so hard they had tears in their eyes, but then they said, we can't use them. If we put those on, we'll get killed. 
When it came to parodying ethnic groups, Tom and Jerry were equal opportunity offenders. Numerous blackface scenes were covered up or edited out, and the series also featured a melting pot of ethnic stereotypes. Editors stayed busy removing offensive Asian stereotypes from shorts like Puss in Toots and Little Runaway as well as Native American stereotypes appearing in shorts like Two Little Indians, Kitty Foiled, and Flirty Birdie. After Amazon Prime added Tom and Jerry to its streaming service with a racism disclaimer, Lizzie Crocker from the Daily Beast claimed it was an unnecessary precaution. Crocker said, quote, In the age of South Park and Family Guy, not much is going to shock us in a Tom and Jerry cartoon. What is the darkest episode of Tom and Jerry? Sometimes Tom and Jerry shorts were just plain creepy. <laughs> Heavenly Puss was banned in South America and the Middle East for images of hell and a sack of drowned kittens. Busy Buddies had a scene edited out featuring an untended baby crawling underwater. Tom and Jerry are best described as frenemies, but lovable little Jerry turns into a straight-up sociopath in The Million Dollar Cat. Scenes featuring smoking in Texas Tom and Tennis Chumps were also banned in the UK after a single viewer complaint, but it doesn't get much darker than Blue Cat Blues. The episode featured an ambiguous ending with our crestfallen heroes sitting on train tracks awaiting an oncoming locomotive and it unwittingly started an urban legend. According to the Hollywood rumor mill, the series was about to be canceled, and Hannah and Barbera allegedly decided a Thelma and Louise style pact would be a fitting way to end the show. Well, our friends at Snopes say no for one very good reason. Tot Watchers was the final episode of the Hannah Barbera era, and it was released nearly two years later. So, Tom and Jerry obviously survived those train tracks, but were taken away by animal control at the end of Tot Watchers for stealing a baby. Should Tom and Jerry cartoons be censored? Raul Aguirre is a former Disney animator who claims that classic cartoons reflect world events and, quote, represent a stage our culture was in at the time. Aguirre, who now runs the podcast Man vs. Art, said, quote, you alienate and upset people because you're trying to cover up culture, and that's what irks people. Entertainment Weekly senior editor Dalton Ross had a slightly different take on what material should be cut. He said, if you're gonna be concerned about editing Tom and Jerry cartoons to eliminate any possible bad influences that could possibly be mimicked by young children, shouldn't you, oh, I don't know, start with all the scenes where the animals bludgeon each other? Ross also said, when you start going back and editing past works for content, where do you draw the line? D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation is a landmark film in American cinema. It's also racist as hell. Do we sweep it under the rug or examine it as a historical document? Film critic Leonard Malton said, quote, I understand a studio's reluctance to show racially and ethnically sensitive images to children, but he also believes the disclaimers are a suitable compromise. Malton said, quote, If you put these cartoons into a proper historical context and warn parents that they may find those episodes offensive or inappropriate, I think you've done your due diligence. Where can we watch Tom and Jerry cartoons now? You can find unedited versions of most of these classic cartoons on YouTube, but it's still not possible to view them all legally. HBO Max currently features less than half of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons, and has subsequently removed additional shorts from its catalog. Casanova Cat and Mouse Cleaning were once available with offensive scenes blacked up, but both were later pulled from both the streaming service and DVD collections. Comedian Whoopi Goldberg appears on the Tom and Jerry Spotlight Collection DVD set, offering a disclaimer warning viewers about the potentially offensive material. Whoopi says, quote, These depictions were wrong then, and they are wrong today. But the cartoons are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming that these prejudices never existed. But that wasn't good enough for some fans, who proceeded to post angry messages on websites, explaining just why they would not be buying those DVDs. One fan posted, quote, 
These releases are almost exclusively for the adult collector, so why treat us like infants? Another one said, quote, It is a shame to omit pieces of history in a collection simply due to PR getting shaky boots over the past. <laughs> That'll show them. All right, that's been our look back at the banned Tom and Jerry cartoons that were too hot for TV. So now we need to hear from you all, the fans. What was your favorite cartoon growing up? Do you remember seeing any of these Tom and Jerry shorts that we mentioned? Do you think enough time has passed or should MGM continue banning these controversial shorts? Get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts on this sensitive matter. But above all, tell us why you love Tom and Jerry. If you enjoyed our video, hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new video. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.